One blast off. All right, all right, all right. Live. Perfect. Hey, everybody. Jerdog here. 4.20 p.m. It's the 4.20 report. And I'm going to be doing these daily, at least semi-daily. Probably skip over the weekends while I'm doing gigs. Uh, it's hard to find a good Wi-Fi signal. But when I'm at home and I'm safely ensconced in the man cave, which I hate that term, by the way. Don't know why I said it again. Used to be the whole goddamn house was the man cave. Now all we get is the basement. Uh, but this weekend I'll be at the Eagles Club in Springfield, Illinois. And we are doing the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick show. It's a three-hour show with my co-star, Nathan Tricky Allen. We also have D. Lynn Bennett showing up that night to do a guest appearance with his comedy and blues review. So I'm really looking forward to that. And this show is actually something kind of special. It is Father's Day Eve this Saturday. So we are going to be raising funds for an organization called Illinois Fathers which supports single dads. So that's this Saturday, June 17th, at the Eagles Club in Springfield, Illinois. If you're in the area, come on out. There's only a few tickets left, so just uh, hit the link below that I'll put in the comments section or whatever, and you'll be able to get tickets that way. Everybody else, just stay tuned with me here, man, because I was telling the story yesterday about the one-eyed, shit-talking jackass that uh, basically challenged us to a thousand dollar pool bet and then proceeded to whip out his credit card. So I don't know, I thought that was pretty funny, but I forgot a part of the story, um, what his girlfriend said to me when she was shit talking, which is kind of funny, that his girlfriend was his partner. And already I don't like doing bar bets when it comes to pool and darts anyway or anything like that, it gets too fucking heated, people start shit talking, one thing leads to another, and it's just not fun anymore. I just like it to be fun, you know? I've even seen friends get into it over friendly games of darts, where the only thing on the line is paying for the $50 fucking bar tab, you know? They start shit talking, at first it's all funny and clever and witty and just for fun, but then somebody loses, somebody wins, the shit talking escalates, they bow up, get in each other's faces, here comes the overhand right, the next thing you know, the other guy's going down, screaming shit like, I will end you, I will fucking end you, don't ever put your hands on me again, asshole, I'll fucking end you, and those are my friends. You know, I don't like to gamble. I really don't like to gamble. I'm in show business. That's a gamble enough for me. So while we're playing this game of pool and, you know, every little shit talking's going on, and I'm just old chair dog. I can't even play that well to begin with. I know the rules. I know how to hold the cue. But I really don't know all the... I, I sucked at geometry in high school. I, I suck at pool. You know, I can hold my own somewhat among amateurs. But among shit-talking guys that are putting down $1,000 bets on a credit card, I'm going to suck ass. The guy's like, I'm rolling around with a Q, you know, a house cue, and he's making fun of that. I'm like, dude, I don't even, I, I don't even, what do you, I travel around with my own cue stick? That's your bag, dude. That's your game. So he starts shit-talking me. His girlfriend uh, they, they somehow finds out that I'm a comedian and immediately resorts to the, uh, well, you're not very funny. You're a comedian. You're not very funny. I'm like, really, dude? Really? Haven't you been watching me play pool this entire time? How dare you say I'm not funny? This is the damn, this is some of the best comedy you're going to get. But what I realized is that's one of the dumbest things that anybody can say to a comedian. Just immediately challenge, you're not funny. Okay, here's why. It doesn't even insult me. I really don't give a rat's ass less about it. It just makes the person saying it look stupid. I hear it a lot of times when a comedian will be in an argument with somebody or like, you know, like on Facebook or even, you know, well-known celebrity comics that may be chiming in on a, say, a political segment on CNN or Fox News. And as soon as they make a really good point, the person that they're arguing against will say something along the lines of, you're not being very funny right now. They'll immediately challenge their sense of humor, their skill at their profession. And it's right there. It's like you might as well be waving the surrender flag 
argument lost if that's the best thing you can say in an argument to a comedian is to challenge the thing that they do for a living you lost the argument so it's one of the dumbest things I think somebody can say to a comedian even if you know me well enough that you're just trying to bust my balls then you should know me well enough to not bring that weak ass game to bust my balls bring something better you know that if you're the first person to tell me I'm not funny I haven't made it very far in this business all right, every fucking show I do, I get people telling me I'm not funny. It doesn't fucking bother me. All I don't care about the people who don't think I'm funny. I only care about the people who sit there and laugh their asses off and applaud wildly and buy me drinks and book me for shows. Those are the only people I give a shit. I really, I only care about the people that join me on a Facebook Live and comment and have a good time with it. It's not about proving who's better at whose job. It's fucking ridiculous. It's one of the dumbest things you can say to a comedian. You're not funny. You're not funny. It's just low-level thinking. It's mid-level thinking. I wonder if MMA fighters go through that. Like, or, or what other professions maybe even. Like, I was thinking about that. Like, if you're an, a, a, like a locally known MMA fighter, you know, maybe you make your living at it. Maybe you're just a hobbyist. Maybe whatever level you're at. Do you roll into the bar and someone finds out that you do mixed martial arts and like, okay, I can kick your ass. You're not that much of a badass. You want to meet me on the parking lot? Uh, and then here comes the overhand right. I'll end you, motherfucker. I'll fucking end you. Ah! You know? I wonder, if, I wonder if doctors get that. Like, hey, I'm a doctor. Oh, really? C cure my disease right now. Prove it. It's ridiculous. A lot of people put this up as a post earlier. What do you think is the dumbest thing someone can say to a comedian? I got a lot of funny comments. Uh, my friend Todd Stein even made a top ten list of some of the dumbest things people can say to a comedian. Uh, can I tell you a joke? Yeah, you know, that's kind of dumb, but it's not as dumb as a lot of shit that I hear. Oh, sometimes people have good ones, you know, if they deliver it right. If they set it up with, can I tell you a joke, right there you're doomed. That's another reason why it's stupid for people to challenge you when they find out you're a comedian, to challenge you that you're funny. Are you really? Prove it. Tell me a joke. Make me laugh right now. As soon as you say it, no matter what the person says after that, it's not going to work. It's not going to be funny. It really isn't. It's very difficult because you've already said, tell me a joke. Comedy relies on surprise. What makes people laugh is a, like a truth followed by some sudden surprise that takes them off guard. That's how you, that's, it's an involuntary response. So to say, tell me a joke, prove yourself, it's just shit talking. That's really all it is. But yeah, I mean, can I tell you a joke? That isn't nearly as bad as when someone challenges, says, tell me a joke. But when they say, can I tell you a joke? They're already setting it up like, okay, I'm, ex I'm expecting a joke. What's it going to be? How long is it going to take for him to get to the punchline? Uh, you know, I need a refill on my white Russian. How long is this going to be before I can get a refill on my white Russian? Now I'm not even listening to this guy's setup. Okay, finally, we get to the punchline. That's the dumbest, most racist, most sexist, most retarded, most expected thing you've ever heard. That's 90% of people out there saying, can I tell you a joke? Sorry if you're one of them. Sorry, but prove me wrong. Uh, I could be a comedian, but yeah, I get that a lot. You know, some people think that they could, well, everybody could be a comedian, really. If Not everybody, but anybody. Anybody could be. If you just do the things it takes to do to be a comic, write every day, hustle your ass off, get out there and get gigs, get in front of audiences, practice your shit, get good at what you do. You know, anybody could do that. Anybody could... I mean, some of us probably are a little bit more naturally gifted than others because we don't start jokes off for our material with, can I tell you a joke? Uh, here's what you should do. Yeah, I get a lot of advice about what I should do. You should, you know what, man? You should get an airplane. That's the one I hear. You should get your pilot's license. Then you could just fly to all, all these gigs. You wouldn't have to drive anymore. <laughs> it would be nice not having a real job. When are you going to get a real job? That's another one that gets my goat and I shouldn't let it bother me as much as it does but it really gets under my skin where people will start deciding that one thing is a real job versus another thing why do we have all these prejudices about what people do for a living like one thing is better or more worthy than something else you know I don't I don't get it like it's 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 just crazy I think that's one of the things that keeps people from actually realizing their dreams is it like, well, you know, I would like to be a rock star, but that's not going to be as responsible as going into banking. 
you know, I don't know. Maybe ask the fucking people in 2008, 2009 what might have been a more responsible choice. Ask 50 Cent what's a more responsible choice going into fucking music business or going into drug dealing. You can do different shit. You can be good at both. But there are some things that people are going to do that other people are going to question. Is that a real job? Is that a real job? It's just retarded, you know? It's my vocation. Comedy is my vocation. That means your calling. You can't hear your calling in life if all you're doing is listening to that bullshit. You got to really focus in on what makes you happy. That's something you never get asked when you're a kid. Or you do get asked that, but you never really hear it as an answer. You get asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? You never really hear anybody say, I just want to be happy. I want to be happy. No one ever says that. They always say, I want to be a policeman, or I want to be an astronaut, or I want to be a comedian, whatever it is. No one ever says, happy. Maybe start pursuing that a little bit. And I'm also not one of these idiots that says, hey, man, just follow your passion. Just follow your passion. Let the chips fall where they may. You don't need money. You don't need this and that. No, that's bullshit, too. Following your passion isn't quite enough. I have a very deep-rooted, serious passion for laying in a hammock, smoking weed, and staring at the clouds. I have yet to find anybody to pay me for it. Next question. Uh, why do you swear so much? I don't fucking know, man. It's just the way I talk. I try to keep it real. I try to keep it honest. Some people say you got to keep it clean to make it as a stand-up comedian. Well, there's a lot of fucking dirty comedians out there that I can name that are pretty goddamn successful that swear a lot. I think you can do both. I think you got room for clean comics. I think you got room for dirty comics. I think when you're good, there's room for all of us. That's another thing. I think one of the reasons why people challenge you when you're a comedian to prove that you're funny is somehow they think that they're supposed to be the funniest person in the room. You know, like comedy is a competition. There's only room for one of us. You know, like it's the Highlander. There can be only one. You know, there's room for everybody. Comedy should just, everybody should just be laughing all day, every day, trying to find as much humor as fucking possible in your day. It doesn't have to be a competition where somebody has to be the best, and because they're the best, then the other person has jack shit to say about it. Uh, why do you always have to be the center of attention? Yeah, that's another one I get. You're an attention whore. You're an attention whore. I'm actually not an attention whore at all, as I claim while I'm broadcasting live on Facebook to ten people. Uh... <laughs> Quite frankly, yeah, there is a little bit of uh, there is a little bit of need for attention. You don't do this job because you're completely well adjusted. I will give you that. But once you get good at it, it becomes more about just executing on a skill that you've crafted over 10, 20 years. And you know, like I said earlier, it's the one thing I can do. It's the one thing that I'm the best at, that I can make the most money at, and provide the best for my family, and have a great time and be happy doing. So if I have to be the center of attention to get that job done, so be it. But here's why I don't consider myself to be an attention whore, which a lot of people will call comedians, oh, there's an, they're an attention whore, they're an attention whore. Some are, absolutely. But what I feel is the number one job of a comedian is not to get up there and get attention and get praise and get applause and get the get laughs. A lot of comedians will even phrase that, oh, I didn't get any laughs. Stop phrasing it as get laughs. The, 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 the vocabulary is fucking wrong. Start phrasing it as I didn't give as many laughs as I wanted to. I'm not an attention whore or an attention seeker. I'm trying to be a pleasure giver. I'm trying to give people a good time and escape that they can get away from their bullshit nine to five job because they thought they had to go out and be a banker instead of a fucking rock star because no one ever encouraged them just to say they were happy when they were a little kid and asked them what they wanted to be when they grow up. Next question. Anyone can do what you do. All you do is tell jokes and get paid for it. I agree 100% with that, quite frankly. Anyone probably could do what I do. I just tell jokes and get paid for it. That's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. I'm not going to deny that it's anything more than that. I'm really not. Other than that, it makes me happy, and I have a really good time doing it, and I'm personally fulfilled, and I get to talk to cool people and travel the country and meet people. So I guess I, I, I don't just have to tr tell jokes and get paid for it. I also have to drive 50,000 fucking miles a year and try to figure out what to do with junked cars after they have 350,000 miles on them and two flat tires that I can't fix and nobody wants to buy. Uh, so there's a lot to it. You also you have to be an accountant. You have to be a mechanic. You have to figure out how to work digital social technology. Blah, 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 blah. You got to figure out how to keep a rap going for 15 minutes while you got cotton mouth.
And finally, bonus, can I be your opening act? That's actually a really good question. I asked a lot of headliners that question. Most of them said no, but eventually I got to be the headliner myself. Uh, I didn't even go into the comments that people said in here. Uh, Heather, yeah, oh, you put a good one up there. One of the dumbest things somebody can say to another comedian is, can I get you a beer? That's actually one of the smartest things you can say to a comedian. This coming from the uh, from Heather Lynn, who is the manager at the Shamrock Pub in Jackson, Michigan. Another one of my favorite places to perform. Where the last time I was there, right in the middle of my 90-minute set, they just started. They decided to start serving delivery pizza, just right there in the middle of the act. Just hey, would you like garlic sauce with that? Would you, do you want? Would you like garlic salt? Fuck the garlic salt. Just serve the goddamn pizza so I can get on with my show. It's just a can of MSG anyway. But that's a different story from another time. Thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> no, I loved it. You guys were great. Thank you all for watching. Whoever watched, if you like this, give me some likes. Give me some loves. Hit the share button. Um, I'll check back with you tomorrow at 420 or as close as possible. Thanks, everyone. Bye.